<clears throat> Hello, everybody. I see there's 15 people there. Um, I'm going to pull up the question and answer page and move it over. Oh, no, no, I'm not doing that. Okay, I'm moving the questions and answers over here. Hi, everybody. And then I'm going to open up the chat side. There we go. Huh. Huh. Here's the chat. Gonna move it over here. Oh, okay. Let's do this. I think I'm good. I think I'm good. Yeah, I am good. Okay, I've got to watch the time. We're about two minutes from start and I'm checking. There's 16 people signed up. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And I got all kinds of great samples. Um, and um, let me see. Oh, I, I'm already getting thank yous. Thank you for the overview for today's presentation. Yeah, we, we're getting, we're, we're doing things better and better and better, aren't we? And um, I'd like to hear um, your, your comments about uh, the product list that we, um, that we uh, started last week, about any of the products that I talk about um, will be featured. So if you wanna buy them, you can go on our webpage and, um, and, and find where it was the, the garden coach that talked about these different products. So let me know if you like that, if you like that. Um, I'm checking that, I'm, I, I thought the clock was on here, so I'm just looking at my phone. We have two minutes to start, so I don't wanna scare anybody. So, um, so, so I, I really, I have so many fun things to show you today. And how about the wonderful break in the weather? Oh my gosh. I work with Tracy Butler every Wednesday and we record a segment for her Facebook page and you can go, you can go to Facebook and search Tracy Butler ABC seven. And then it's, it's the video section and you can see our segments. We have so much fun, you know, doing that. And I've been working with her though. She informed me and alerted me to the fact that for the next two weeks, the next 14 days, we're going to have this wonderful cooler than normal, temperatures oh my gosh what a break what a wonderful break and then also you know also less humidity so like today is just wonderful so um okay this is good 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 okay thank you i got a comment about that you appreciate the product list and it's always good to have a reference of the products yeah i'm so glad you're liking that okay um i've got one more minute before we get started so i'm going to check to see there's 19 people yay keep them coming keep them coming okay this is really fun that we're doing this. I, I really, I've had a, I've had a really good time putting these together and, and, and putting all the summaries of what we're seeing at the Plant Information Center. You all know that because of COVID, we've changed the way that we do questions and answers. I still have my microscope and they let me run in and use it whenever I need to. But um, we have the nursery office has been converted into the Plant Information Center. And the two windows, there's window one and window two, it's on the back side of, um, of that, that room. You, you enter from the, the back of the nursery and uh, we're there to answer the questions. And so it's, I, I think it's really working pretty well. I, I know people are really happy to be able to bring their samples and to be outside. I don't know, the last, the last four weeks, it hasn't been so much fun to be outside, but today it's lovely. Today it's absolutely lovely. So, so okay, so I'm gonna check again. Oh, 21 people. Very good, very good. And it is 1 p.m., so time to get started. So welcome, everyone. I'm Jennifer Brennan. I'm the, uh, my official title here at Chalet is Horticulture Information Specialist. And I've had that title ever since I came to Chalet 29 years ago. Isn't that amazing? 29 years. So, um, so and it's, it's really a fun, fun um, title to have because I get, to, I get to look up all kinds of information and share it with people. Back when I was managing the Learning Center, 
you know, that, that was, that was um, always important to have horticulture information. And now the learning center is being managed by our marketing department. And, you know, of course it's not in the learning center. It's all virtual. It's all virtual right now. So it looks like it's going to be that way for quite a while. So, so for the garden coach, what I do is, um, and, and I love that, that Carly Thalman, who is the, um, one of the owners, she's, she's the daughter of the, of the current owner, Larry Thalman, and she's, um, she has me put together the outline, and so you all got a copy of this. I'm going to try to follow it, uh, but, but I've got some really neat samples, so, so we're going we're to talk about that. And then this, this is the list of the, the products I'm going to be talking about, and these are the ones that you can be directed to go to our, um, our website. And, and buy them online, you know, or even come into the store to get them. But, but um, it's, it's turning out to be, you know, really, um, I think, a good way to, to do this. Um, okay. Oh, what a nice compliment that you've been gardening for years and you've been learning so much from the garden coach. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So now we'll go ahead and get started with this. And then what I'd like to do is I'd, I'd like to get this done in, in 30 minutes. And then I save the last 30 minutes for other questions and answers. So so um, what I really need to talk about first and foremost is we have had extreme heat for the last six weeks. I mean, it's been torture for us humans and it has really been torture for all of our landscape plants. Oh my gosh, and lawns, and lawns. And man, the lawns just started collapsing um, in the last week. And in the, this week, they, they've looked horrible. So, um, so what, what has been the most um, critical is, and I've talked about, I've confessed about how I, I get the green cast soil temperature alert. So I get these reports, see how I get these reports at every, every day, every day. And they talk about what the soil temperatures, and that's, that's the temperature of the soil, five inches below the soil line, they, they measure that. And then they, they do that on all zip codes. So you, you apply for your zip code and they send you alerts based on what diseases and insects are gonna be coming because of these temperatures. What has been frightening, frightening to me as a horticulturist is the week before it was Friday, the soil temperature was 85 degrees. Last week on Thursday, it hit 85 again and that's, hot enough to kill the roots of grass plants and the cool season turf grasses. And it's terrible for them. Now, this week and today, and the, the forecast going forward, our soil temperatures are gonna go down to 76, which is wonderful. That's gonna be incredible for our, our, you know, our cool season turf grasses. I'll go into more of that later, but I wanna, I wanna let you know that I watch the, the air temperatures and the soil temperatures, and that means so much to our, um, our, you know, our landscape plants and our turf, our lawns, our lawns. Okay, so now I wanna warn you, don't let this wonderful break in the humidity and the heat um, let you um, kind of, um, and, and that the reduced humidity, don't let you get tricked into being complacent about it. You know, you really need to focus on, uh, you know, we had that rain last night. I rushed home and in the, in the you know, in the pouring rain, I was so excited. When I checked the rain gauge this morning, I was so disappointed. Again, not even two tenths of an inch at my house. So, you know, unless you're monitoring the rain at your house, don't assume that you're getting enough rainfall. So be sure and, and water, water, water. I sound like a broken record, uh, but it's that important. It's that important. I have great examples of, this was a, this is a chestnut tree and the person brought it in and said, you know, I'm worried it's a disease. This isn't a disease. This is lack of rain and too much heat. So we call this scorch when the, the edges turn brown and it's a combination of too hot and, and not enough water. And so I, th this person was going home to set the sprinkler up and just let it soak the, 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 the root section for a full hour. That's what you need to do. That's really what you need to do. Okay, so let's keep going. So these are, I'm gonna, these are the things I want you to watch out for in, you know, in, you know, in your garden. And, and oh man, I didn't, I didn't unbag the turf. Okay, and I have to, I, I'm gonna put this I have this in a cardboard box so I don't get soil all over the, um, my, my computer. And this is what most of the, the lawns are looking like right now. And it's horrifying, it, it's absolutely horrifying. 
okay, I'm, I'm holding this one up and I'm gonna get the other one ready too. And these are bluegrass lawns in sun. And there's several reasons why they're looking like this. And I'm gonna go over this, okay. Um, this, this is one, see how it's browned out? You can see the green grasses that are still, they're still living. And um, this is a problem of the heat and the drought. And then also this one is reeking. I, I have, I'm, I'm allergic to fungal things. And so I wonder, you know, why I'm sneezing and coughing and, you know, my husband's afraid I've got COVID. No, it's just my allergies from all the fungus. And, um, but, but this, this is a combination of brown patch, which is rhizoctonia. And then this one, this one is summer patch on a bluegrass lawn. And you can see it has a little more green, but you still have those brown, those brown sections. And I joke, I joke that turf guys aren't real creative when the way they name their diseases. They're all like patch diseases. So there's brown patch, there's summer patch, and um, and, and it, it, with, with, it's usually it's usually areas that are three inches in diameter. This is three inches from here to here. So they're three inches in diameter, and, and then you get more and more patches, and they tend to coalesce, and all of a sudden the whole lawn looks like it's 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 brown. Um, and there's also there, there's also oh okay um, summer patch. The active the active fungus is called Magnaporta. You don't want to know all this stuff, but anyway, I, I I have it in my head to share with you. And then there's another one called Dollar Spot. Now the, the Dollar Spot is called Dollar Spot because the, the patches are only about that big around. It's like the size of a, a silver dollar in the lawn, but you get so many of them that they coalesce together. Okay, so we're seeing all of them right now, and they've all just popped up because of the wet, wet May. That's when these all these fungi are, that's more than one fungus, are in the soil. And then when the, the temperature's just right, that's 60 degrees in the soil, and you know, and 70 degrees up in the air, then um, then they're active, and then they grow into and inoculate the grass plants. They can either get into the roots, they can get into what we call the verdure. That's where the crown is, going into the roots or going into the blades, or just the blades themselves. Now, if it gets in the crown, it, it's, it has potential for killing the plant. And all of these can go, they can get established in all those areas. Now, it, oftentimes you'll see those same brown patches in the same spot as the lawn, year after year after year. It's because it's a soil-borne fungus. Now, um, they inoculate in May, and but the disease doesn't show up six to eight weeks later, and that was in the last two weeks. And all of a sudden, they just, they just popped out to the surface with a vengeance. They just looked terrible. So now, right, right now, the turf specialists always say the best way to do that is to suppress the fungus, and the best thing to use is a good systemic fungicide. Immunox was derived from the turf industry years and years ago. I think it's been out about 30 years. And it's mycobutanil is the active ingredient in this. And you can, you can spray this on the, um, you know, on, on the turf. Uh, for the turf recommendation, for the concentrate, it's seven ounces a gallon. We have a hose in sprayer that you just took to the hose that automatically sprays it at seven ounces to a gallon. Uh, we're sold out of that right now, but we got more coming in. So, so what's what's great about this, and this is the this is our go-to best best product, I think so, for all the fun, fungi that we're seeing. So I'll show you more. But you spray with this to suppress the fungus, and then you grow the grass. So that means get the fertilizer on the grass. Now, this if you've got a bad-looking lawn, don't worry. We're going into the perfect month for fixing it. And so August is usually when you do. Um, the most important fertilizer of the entire year. And that's because as the days get shorter, the grass uses the most nitrogen, you know, that way. And so, so, so you want to get your fertilizer down starting any time. Um, we usually say the best time to do the, the Labor Day fertilizing is from August 15th to September 15th. Now, our turf is so stressed that it's not going to hurt to do it next week. And, you know, that, you know, even a week, that would be a week early. And because of the cooler temperatures and the, the lower humidity, the, the, the fungal activity is gonna really be slowing down. And then the grass is gonna be waking up because they're cool season grasses and they're gonna love having the fertilizer is like all the building blocks to put themselves back together. So I encourage people to go ahead and put the fertilizer down. My favorite is an organically based one from the Espoma company. And it's, it's, they're called, it's called their Espoma Lawn Fertilizer. 
And we in, you know, here at the store call it the red bag because it's, it's kind of a burgundy red bag, you know, uh, and so we say get the Espoma red bag. And what's nice about it is it has a 15% nitrogen. So that's a combination of organically baked, based nitrogen that will, you know, it's a long-term slow release. It, it will feed the lawn for up to eight weeks. But it also has, we call it juiced. It has a little extra nitrogen that will actually um, help green the lawn up more quickly. So it's a, it's a wonderful product. And what's great about it is it's gonna also help encourage the beneficial um, fungi and the beneficial bacteria that will outcompete the disease. And that's what's really, really important. Now, if you wanna bring a sample in, I can put it in the microscope and tell you whether you have brown patch, summer patch, or dollar spot. And then if you do have that, it would be really smart to overseed. And overseed when, means you add fresh grass seed. This is the best time of year to start grass seed, much better than the spring, because our soil is so warm, it's gonna germinate really quickly. So when we're talking about germination of bluegrass and a, and a healthy lawn seed mixture has bluegrass, perennial ryegrass, and creeping bent grass. And that's so you have like a biodiversity in, in the lawn. And so, so the bluegrasses take the longest to germinate and it's 14 days, two whole weeks to 21 days. And in the warmer temperatures, it's, they're gonna germinate in two weeks. Now the fescues and rye are really cool. They germinate in seven to 10 days. So in, with this warm, warm soil, they will germinate and those, those brown areas and those, those bare spots will green up in a week. So the key is keeping them consistently moist. So when the temperatures are like they've been in the last six weeks, you wanna water lightly every morning and every, every late afternoon or early evening. It's the only time we ever tell you to water a lawn twice a day. So we have the high temperatures and, you know, and, and, and the lack of rainfall. And it's really important because if those little baby grass seeds germinate and then they get, they get dried out before the roots get established, they get, they get killed. You have to start all over again. So it's really, you have to be really committed to keeping it nice and moist. Now there is a product, and I didn't talk about this on the list, but there is a cool product called, it's a soil moist product, and um, it actually has graphite in it, and, and then the acrylic polymer, and you coat the seed with it, and that acrylic polymer keeps it moist, and the graphite helps warm it up, so you get faster seed germination. So that's a nice helper if you, you, know, if you don't think you're gonna be dedicated to watering enough, and, um, but, but usually usually just the watering once in the morning and once in the afternoon will do the trick. Don't worry about covering with anything. And people think they should use peat moss. No, 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 no. It's, it holds too much moisture, but keeps it too soggy if it stays moist. And then once it dries out, it's almost impossible to rehydrate. So don't use peat moss. If you have to cover with anything, we just say use a very thin coating of topsoil but you don't want it thicker than the thickness of the seeds. And if you looked at grass seed, you realize they're not thick at all. So the best thing is just leave it on the area and, and just keep it, keep it moist, keep it consistently moist. Okay, so that's the secret on, you know, on the grass seed. And you can overseed a thin lawn and, and just let it work its way down in through the, the, the bare, into the bare soil and keep it moist and it'll germinate. Another thing you can do, and this is the perfect time of year to core aerate. So when you core aerate a lawn, it opens holes that are half inch in diameter. Oh, excuse me, I'm gonna sneeze. <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, I'm gonna get some water. And um, so, so when you core aerate, this is the best time of year because grass seed, or the, or the uh, grass seed can get down into contact with the soil. It opens up to aerate the soil and you get more water and more fertilizer down at the root zone of the grass plants. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, now I've got <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> How do you like my Yeti? The ice stays in it from seven in the morning till 6 p.m. when I leave at night. It's the coolest, it's the coolest gift I've, gift I've ever gotten. So get a Yeti. Okay, now back to turf, back to turf. So again, the fertilizer, the, the seed, and you're going to have a disease-resistant lawn going forward. You'll have a new looking lawn 
by the end of September if you do this now. Then the next time you would fertilize would be Halloween, and that was considered the winterizer. And unless you have a lot of weeds, then keep using that the espoma again for the, the, the Halloween feed, and your lawn will be set for next season, set for next season. Okay, so now I got, I got the lawn stuff kind of out of the way, and um, let's keep moving on here. So um, now there is a grassy weed that has shown up. It's a warm season turf grass. It's the creeping bed grass. And a lot of lawns are showing the damage of the creeping bed grass. And what it does is it tends to grow up over the surface of the bluegrass lawns. It has a rudimentary root system. It tries to make roots down through the, the bluegrass and through the thatch. And when we get as hot and dry as we've been, then it totally browns out. And it looks like sheets of, of kind of a stringy runners on top of the on top of your lawn. It looks horrible. I've had so many people bring samples in. And if you have that, the best way to take care of it is check to see if it's creeping bent. Bring a sample in, I can ID it. Usually you can tell because when you start and you start looking at it and you pull it up off the surface of the grass, it comes up kind of in long stringy sheets. And uh, I tell people to use a, a leaf rake, but I get nervous about some of rake because they really try to dig in. Don't, don't do that. You just wanna rake this off the surface and it's all dead right now and just kind of pull it up and get rid of it. And then um, to prevent that from coming back, there's a great product. It's from the Bay, uh, the, the Bayer. It's from the, uh, the Scott's company. And it, the active ingredient is called mesotrione. And mesotrione was invented, uh, it'll, be, it'll be 20 years ago now. And um, they had the liquid form first and that the, the turf specialists are using that. And um, then they just came out with the granular form uh, it'll be about five years ago. And then of course, Scott's got it being the big, the big lawn company. And they're using that as their pre-emergent weed control and the, the way to get rid of creeping bent grass um, in lawns. And it, they, they, it, it, it's in this pre-emergent Scott's step one proceeding. And the cool thing is it's an excellent fertilizer. It does have a higher phosphorus because it, it's intended for seeding. But um, with that mesotrione, what that does is that that burns all the chlorophyll out of the creeping bent grass. It doesn't damage the uh, the bluegrass at all. It's the coolest product. It's the coolest product. So you can use it, and then you see where all the white is. That's where it's creeping bent grass. And you know, I, I recommend using that now if you've got the creeping bent, and uh, you know, and then also use it again next spring as your as your pre-emergent weed control or your crabgrass preventer. And you use that, and you use that at the end of April. You know, the end of April. So, so that's a great one to, to look for, and that's on the list. That's on that's on your list. Okay, now so now there's lots and lots of insects, and lots and lots of fungi in in yeah, out there in the vegetable garden, and also on our landscape plants. So now you're in for the Rocky Horror Picture Show here. Uh, actually, these are actual samples. Okay, so. All the fun, all the fungi that we're seeing. Okay, the most, the most common one I'm seeing, right? This is a good one right here. Is on crab apples. You know, this is on a crab apple. This is apple scab, and then also a little bit of rust. So this is apple scab. What happens? And this was probably a disease-resistant variety, but the pressure was so high this season that we're seeing it even on disease resistant you know, varieties. So it, it's, it's a yellow spot and a brown spot, excuse me, a brown spot, and then with a yellow edge around it. And then what happens is the whole leaf turns yellow if, it, if it's not a disease resistance and they drop off the tree. Um, this is another, here's an example right here. This is the, here's the yellow, there's the yellow leaf and how it's dropped off. That's classic apple scab. And then this is, this is also, the apples, this, this is the rust where I'm seeing a ton of rust. And rust has these yellow spots. The brown spots on this leaf is apple scab. And then look at the backside. This is the fruiting structure. I'll put it right up at the top. This is the fruiting structure of the rust and it's putting out teleospores and it's making spore to go back out and inoculate the alternate host, which is Eastern red cedar or the juniper, the junipers. So you can't do anything now. The cool thing is, with the hot temperatures we're having is what, what happened is it, it, it burnt 
the the sporulation off. It just stopped it, stopped it hot. I was going to stop cold, but the 95 degree air stopped it. So uh, it, a lot of it didn't go back to the other plants. So that's been one good thing. I, I still don't like all the heat, but okay, here's another example of, um, this is on Boston Ivy. And you see those gorgeous glossy green leaves with those spots on them. And these all popped up in the last two weeks, you know, the, the last two weeks of the plants. And um, this is anthracnose. And I'm showing you the backside where it was trying to sporulate. And it just, again, it got stopped because of the, the heat. So there's no secondary reinfection, which is kind of nice, but, you know, with the hot temperatures that we're having. So all of these can be prevented next year by um, being aware that you have them. And when the new leaves are starting to form, protect those leaves, especially with immunox again. Here's this wonderful systemic fungicide. You spray it on the leaves. It's translaminar, which means you spray one surface of the leaf. Like if you spray this side, it's pulled through all the cell and it goes through on the underneath side. So it's wonderful. And it stays in those leaves. It's systemic. It stays in the leaves for 14 days, even if it rains. Oh, it's the best thing. So this, this is, I wish I should have stock in this, shouldn't I? It, it's, a, it's a great product. Okay, here's on roses. This is, this is black spot on roses, okay? And you can see, once the disease gets started, then the leaves turn yellow and they'll drop off. So black spot. This is another one that I'm seeing a lot of. This is a juniper. And, and oh, it shows really well on this large screen. This, um, this you can see the sporulation on it. And this is what we call um, a Fomopsis tip light. And you can see how it was in the stems back here last year. Okay, and then the new growth came out and you can see it inoculated here. This shows the tip light. And then these new tissues right here are also inoculated. When you put it in the microscope, you can see where, you know, where, it's in, where it's entered and it can be bad. So again, Immunox will take care of that. I would spray that right now on this one so to keep more spore from releasing on it. So, so, and then here's another one, here's another one. This is red twig dogwood. This is a variegated red twig dogwood. And this is called Circospora leaf spot. The variegated ones tend to be a little more susceptible because the leaves are a little more tender. So they, they got that, but, but it's interesting. Look at this. You can tell, these are the new leaves that are forming. I'm gonna try to get my fingers on it. These are the new leaves that are forming at the tip of the plant. And see how the older, the older leaves are the ones that were, were susceptible. They got inoculated. And then as it warmed up, um, these leaves didn't get as much disease. So that kind of shows how you know, it progresses you know, in the plant. Again, immunox would take care of it next spring. Um, this one, it might be really smart to do a preventative and spray the leaves and all the stems just to kind of stop the, the sporulation. These are more in the shade, so the, the high temperatures wouldn't have stopped that, but that would be a good one to, you know, to, to take, care of, take care of that. Now, um, now I'm gonna shift gears. Oh, no, no here's another one. This was on, um, this was anthracnose on um, a, a, a cranberry bush um, viburnum. And you can see how it got, the, this was the newest growth. You can see how the youngest growth really got it bad. So this one, this one all browned out and you see the whole, the whole edge got browned out. So, you know, so again, lots and lots of fungal problems. Now I'm gonna shift gears and go into the insects that, that we've been seeing. One of the biggest stars and uh, right now, and they probably have about three more, three more weeks, are the Japanese beetles. And they will skeletonize a leaf. And you can see this, this you see how they just chew. This is a, a linden leaf. And you can see how they eat all the tissue and just leave the veins. So we call that skeletonizing. And so, so you need to spray with um, an insecticide. Um, you know, I like the, the, the Bayer Advance or the Bio Advance, uh, the systemic. You spray at dusk and then you're not going to kill any um, the pollinators. They'll be back at their hives. And then it's absorbed in and stays in the leaves that are sprayed for 30 days. Um, um, this this is, okay, now, now, now I'm going into more of the insects. Here we go, insects and things that are eating. Oh, this is interesting. This is interesting. A customer just brought this in this morning, so this is kind of a new addition. Um, she was worried about, um, about um, a squash vine borers on her cucumbers and her zucchinis. These, um, look, look, at these, look at these eggs that are laid. Isn't this fun? 
these are eggs and um, they will hatch and then it can you know, cause problems. So she'd been using an insecticide and only found this on one leaf. So that, that's kind of a, that's kind of a, you know, a, 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 good, a good sign. Okay, now this one, this one and this one, th this is one of my cute little miniature um, hostas. And you can see how the slugs have just ravaged it. And slugs are pretty lazy. They eat in between the veins. You see the veins right here and here. They don't want to cross over the veins because they're too chewy. And then they ate all of this over here and all of this, but that's slug. So you want to put your sluggo out because unfortunately with all the heat and humidity, um, every egg hatched, every egg hatched. And so there's tons of them out there right now. And if you don't kill them now, they'll overwinter and come back next year. And so sluggo is the best, you know, because it's those little pellets, they're embedded with iron phosphate, the slugs can't resist, they eat them, it kills their appetite. The iron phosphate kills their appetite and then they stop feeding. So the damage stops immediately. This is a lily of the valley and look this and see how they're also real vertical along the veins. Classic, 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 classic slug damage. So, so don't worry about these. They come back. They're so they're such an aggressive plant. Don't worry about it. it's not going to hurt them at all. But get that slug bait down to, to prevent those. Okay, this is another this is another fun one. Okay, this this is a, a hydrangea, and the new leaves the new leaves are just fine. See the new leaves right here. These are the new leaves right there. But then look how this was this is a four line plant bug damage. And you can tell that it was right, you know, and they, they ride in with storms when we have the storms. They, they come down with the rain and then they use their mouth part, it's a needle. They insert it in, into the leaf and suck a section dry. And, and you can see each little circle, they keep moving and sucking and dry, sucking it dry and then move all the relief. Then when they get done, they move on to go someplace else or travel north. So it's not going to kill the plant. It just is unsightly when you look at it. And the whole top of the plant looked like that. So. You know, no way to fix it, you know, so, so this is when I like to, if I've had this kind of problem, I'll use the systemic drench on a shrub like this at the beginning of the season. And then with, they take one, they insert their, their needle mouth part once, suck a section dry, it kills them. So you don't get that terrible, terrible damage. Um, this is Magnolia um, scale. And you can see, um, you can see the white, the, 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 that's where the, the insect is underneath that, that covering. And then they're laying eggs. So when they lay the eggs, you get that white um, you know, it's substance that oozes out. But, and then this shows also, see the gray, see the, see the black right here? This is the black right here, that black. That's the sooty mold, which is a secondary problem. It's the mold is feeding on the honeydew, which is what is the excrement of the scale and it sticks on the leaves, it's sticky. And you know, so once you get rid of the, the, the scale, then you stop having that problem. But this is the systemic um, insecticide from BioAdvanced Urbanide that you mix based on this, the, the circumference of the trunk. And uh, you just look at the diameter of the trunk at shoulder height, multiply times three to get you the circumference. And that's the number of ounces of the product you add to a gallon of water and then pour it right where it goes down into the, uh, where the trunk goes into the ground. And it's absorbed by the plant, stays in the plant for 12 months, you know, the, 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 the full year. Okay, so now, what, let me see, let me see. Okay, the next thing I wanna show you is a nutrient, a nutrient, nutrient problem. And um, this was a great example that came in just yesterday. And this is a tomato. And my first reaction was when I saw how pale green the leaves are, was to ask, you know, what kind of fertilizer was, was used. And this is in a container, and there was fertilizer that was used at the very beginning when it was first planted, but there was none used since. And so I said, wow, this looks like it needs fertilizer. And when she said she hadn't been using it, well, it needs nitrogen. That would green the leaves up. But this is a classic. See these purple edges and how the veins look purple? That's an indicator, and on, here on the edge over here, you see this is all purplish, kind of a purple color. That's a, an indicator that it needs phosphorus. And phosphorus is what's used to, um, to, to, to make the flowers and the tomatoes, and the fruit. And so, you know, so this, will, this, in the, this leaf won't get fixed, but the new leaves that form will be normal, and then the plant will produce better and it will be much happier. So my favorite is the 
uh, the Dr. Earth tomato, vegetable, and uh, herb food because in a container it lasts 30 days. Out in the garden, it lasts 60 days. So you're not always running out to put the fertilizer down. So, so that that's a great one. <clears throat> okay, now let me see how are we doing on time. And I'm going to look at some of the um, the, the 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 questions that y'all have. Perfect. I'm right on schedule. Um, I'm right on I'm right on schedule. Um, okay. Now, the last thing I want to show you is one of my samples is, um, is what um, humans can do. So be careful because humans cause damage to their plants as much as the slugs and the diseases do. So be careful, be careful. The, the person brought this, this plant in yesterday and asked me what was wrong with it. And so it was one of those things where I couldn't see anything with the naked eye, my, my naked eyes. Okay, see that? See this? See that? See the the brown on here? The the brown patches, and that's a classic one right there. See that? See that? And I'll put it up close to that. And you have this that this leaf is damaged, and that leaf is damaged, and then look at this leaf right here. It's damaged, and look what happened to the flower spike. It got damaged. So I asked, you know, what did you spray with? Um, she did one of those, those, and and I forgot his name. The old anyway. It, it, she used the detergent. She used a detergent and baking soda and at, mixed it with water and sprayed it on thinking she was going to take care of any diseases and any um, insects. And she burnt all the cuticle off and, and damaged, damaged the leaves. And the fortunate thing is that they didn't get totally burned, but unfortunately the tip and the, the part of this flower bud that's not brown is dried up. And so it, it, won't, it won't flower. So be careful, be careful. If you're gonna do anything you read on the internet, be sure and touch base with one of us at Chalet so we can say, ooh, I don't think. And if you're gonna search anything on the internet, make sure it's a research-based institution. So like anything that ends with EDU. Another excellent um, um, source, I love the Missouri Botanic Garden. It's called Mobot. You just type in M-O-B-O-T and, and, and then it pops up and you can get all kinds of wonderful information, you know, you know, on it. More plant information than product information. But you know, go to like University of Illinois has great information. Um, Michigan State has great information. Purdue has great information. Oh, Ohio State is phenomenal. It's called the Backyard, the Beagle Backyard um, Lawn. They call it Beagle for short, Backyard. But it's a great source. It's an absolute great source. Okay, so I'm gonna put this back down, so be careful what you do to your plants. All right, now let me go back over and I'm gonna, I'm gonna move, um, I'm gonna take some of these questions and then go into the final is what to do in the garden, you know, this next week. Oh, maybe I should do that first, or let me see. Okay, all right, um, I, here, I'm gonna answer some of the questions that have come up, all right, everybody? All right, so um, Beth says, can I water plants twice a day when the leaves start to droop during the day, like hydrangeas and zinnia plants? Yes, you, yes, you can. If, you know, what I like to recommend is you water really, really well you know, early in the day. So the plants go into the, the day hydrated. And, but when we have the high temperatures we're having and, you know, and the high humidity, a lot of times, especially plants like hydrangeas will, will, will wilt and we, we call it flagging. And if that happens, you want to rewater it and then give it time for it to come back up. Sometimes they just are, they just wilt and they don't come back up until the sun goes down. But, but you really don't want to let them wilt off too often because then that means you're getting damage to the root area. Can I mow over the overseeded when dealing with the thinning lawn? That's Pam. Pam, yes, you can. Everyone thinks our lawnmowers are vacuums and that when we go over with the lawnmower, we're sucking all the seed up. No, no, no. The, 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 the spinning blades push air down. And so it, it's not gonna damage. Now, if you have little tiny seedlings coming up, you wanna wait two weeks before you put a lawnmower over it or become, before you're walking on it. Because walking on new seedlings can damage them. So, but that was a great, great question. Don't worry about mowing. All right, uh, please explain how to put slug all around the plants. Oh, this is, pa this is Pam. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Um, to use the slug all, it's, it's one teaspoon for every three square feet. You think, oh my gosh, that's not enough. But um, when I like, to, I joke about lifting the leaves of the hosta. I, I it's like lifting their skirts, and then you just it, the the the, the slug oak comes in a shaker 
bottle, not unlike Parmesan cheese. Well, the old fashioned craft Parmesan cheese, any, any, any self-respecting person eating Parmesan these days doesn't use a shaker, but, but, but anyway, you shake it, you shake it out and then that's all you need. That's all you need to do. And, and, you know, just all around wherever the slugs are and that takes care of it. Now, what I like to do, I have a huge shade garden with, with hostas everywhere. I, I treat underneath my hostas, but then I also shake a little bit out on the lawn around the edge of the, the, the garden because the slugs escape during the sunlight during the day and they hide out in the lawn. So if there's slug out in the lawn, sometimes they'll eat it there and never come back. So I, I love doing that. Okay, so now um, let me let me open this up. Um, is crabgrass preventer and pre-emergence the same project, or do they have different ingredients? Oh, this is Usha. Hi, Usha. Okay, the crabgrass preventer and the pre-emergent um, um, use the same active ingredients. And you know, trifurulon it was was it was what you usually find in 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 the, the the classic traditional ones, and um, or Stigeron. and then and then, um, but in the new and the new product, the one from Scotts that I was talking about, it's Mesotrion. So you know, so so you know, they're they're different products for different you know, different products have different actives, but usually they're usually usually you know, you'll still see the same ones. Okay, why? Okay, this is Usha again. Why few leaves? Why their few leaves on the hydrangea become lighter green color? And the veins look prominent. Ooh, that's a really good question. That's called chlorosis. And whenever you see the, you know, the, the veins darker green and the and and the, the intervenal tissue, that's the tissue between the veins, when it's paler yellow, you know, then that's usually a sign that the, the soil was probably waterlogged when the, the leaves were being formed and the, the roots couldn't do their job. They didn't bring the right nutrients up. And so then they make incomplete pigmentation. And, um, and if, if, a, if a leaf gets formed like that, usually it's kind of stuck like that. And so whenever you add new fertilizer, it's not the damaged leaves that get improved, it's the new foliage out of the tips that get improved. And you'll see that they're not gonna be chlorotic like that. So, so you guys have such wonderful, wonderful questions. Okay, so now let's keep, I'm gonna keep going on here about um, what you need to do in the next week, in, you know, the next week. So, most importantly, water and water. You know, you know, make sure you get everybody a good soaking. And then it's th this, you wanna get the last application of fertilizer on the plants. You know, we usually say you don't wanna fertilize after the end of July, or you can sort of push it and push it till the, the 15th of August. Um, you know, you, you, I like to, because it's the end of July, I would say get that fertilizer down now, water the plants first, then put your fertilizers down and water them in well afterwards. And the plants, especially with these cooler temperatures, they're gonna be able to use it and really benefit from it. So use, use, use that, you know, get that fertilizer down. Use your sluggo, use the sluggo. Okay, um, okay, you wanna, you wanna protect any of the plants that, you know, the insects are trying to eat. And there are so many insects out there. So use earth-friendly naturals when you can, or use the chemicals in an earth-friendly way which means using them late in the evening. So you're not gonna kill any beneficials or kill any pollinators. And then especially, I really love to um, encourage them to use the systemics where it's absorbed in and stays in the parts of the plant that you want protected and you're not spraying things and you're not killing insects that you don't have to kill. So, so okay. Um, if you use the drench, it's called the, it's called the bio-advanced all-in-one for roses and flowers, and there's also a recommendation for shrubs. If you've used that earlier in the year, April 15th, June 1st, um, the, 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 the third application time was July 15th. If you've missed that, go ahead and put that down now. And that's that wonderful liquid that has a 914.9 fertilizer, liquid fertilizer. I love liquid fertilizers. You know, when because you get them right down on the root zone, and the plant can take them up immediately. And then it also has the systemic insecticide; it's an imidacloprid, and also the systemic fungicide, myclobutanil. Oh no, no, tebuconazole. It's tebuconazole, and it's a very broad spectrum fungicide. Stays in the tissues of the of the plant where it's taken up, and really does a job for keeping everything neat and tidy and, and disease free. So do that again 
on the boxwood, on the roses, and in any of the smaller, you know, the, you know, the, the small trees, large shrubs. And it really does a good job. It really does a good job. Okay. Um, oh, make sure you're still using animal repellents because the, the rabbits are, are just wreaking havoc on, you know, on all of our plants. When it's hot and dry for the plants, guess what? It's hot and dry for the, the animals too. If they don't have a good water source, they eat plants to get, to get their water. So um, on things like hostas and things like, um, um, they're, they're just eating everything. They're, they're, they're even eating things like um, the coral bells, the heuchera, and you'll go out and see just big heavy bites taken out of everything. And the best one, and, and then on oh, the vegetable gardens too, they're horrendous in the vegetable gardens. The best one to use is the liquid fence for, uh, it's called dual action for rabbits. And it really does a good job. Spray once a week for the first two applications, then once every two weeks, and then af after that, once a month, every month. And you know, that, that'll really take care of them. And um, I was hoping that, um, I was hoping that the rabbits had grown up, but no, there's just so many babies out there. We've had a, the spring that we've had has really encouraged uh, propagation of rabbits too. So, so be on that, you know, be on the lookout, you know, for, you know, for that. Um, okay. I think, I think, I, I, I think I had, you know, a, a lot to show. We still have 23 people. Um, I had six questions. Let me make sure I got all of the, the questions answered. Um, okay, I'm over on this side here. Okay, I'm going to go up and yeah, it looks like I, oh no, here's more, here's more. Pam has one more. Oh, and Karen has another one. Uh, you talked about it a bit last week, aphid control on um, milkweed without harming butterflies with a plant. Oh, you know, that's, that's, there's, there's, um, you know, there's a great woman and speaker and I'm just blanking on her name, I'm so sorry. And she, she goes by the name of the insect lady. And she's, she's one that has tried to let, you know, say if you have aphids on milkweed or the butterfly weed, just leave them and then, you know, you know, the predators will eat them, like the birds will eat them, or and then and then the, the and, and then other insects will eat them too. And then the life cycle just runs its course and they're gone. You see, she always says if says if you wait two weeks, they'll be gone. Um, I I uh, most of the customers here don't like to see all of their stems covered with aphids. So, you know, so again, use an, you know, an, 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 like a systemic is really wonderful, but Unfortunately, on milkweeds, you don't want to use a systemic because you're going to impact the um, the, the butterfly larva. So, so use um, a, a stream of cold water to knock the insects off. That's an integrated pest management approach to dealing with with pest control. You know, you wash them off, and it takes them a long time to crawl back up on the plant. And just keep checking. You know, if they come back, then do it again. And if they just keep coming back at the, at the high populations then go ahead and use an insecticide, you know, to, to get rid of them. But I, I, on, on milkweed, I just leave it and let, let everything kind of fend for itself. And, and it usually works out. It, it never hurts the plants. Okay, now, what product do you want to use now for a viburnum leaf beetle? Oh my gosh, yeah, the adults are out now. Um, I haven't had any more samples come in since last week. And I'm wondering if the heat has really impacted them, the heat and the lack of rain. But, um, to protect all of your viburnums, you really should use a systemic, and that's the Bayer tree and shrub or the BioAdvanced tree and shrub insecticide or the Bonai tree and shrub insecticide. And you mix that three ounces per foot of plant hide in a gallon of water and pour it right where the trunk was in the ground, and that will stay in the plant for a full year. And by doing it now, you're gonna impact the adults that are feeding and also laying eggs. And then when those eggs hatch next spring in May, then the larva will, will feed on the leaf and it will kill them. And it's stopping, effectively stopping their life cycle. Great, great question. And I can't, I can't repeat that enough that, um, you know, that, you know, that you really need to protect the viburnums. Um, this is a terrible insect that has moved into our region. Okay, so now um, another, another wonderful, um, question from Usha, what to do with OT, with the OT lilies, OT, OT, the oriental 
it, are you wait oriental oriental i, I mean um or i'm not sure i understand what ot is is uh usha oh the tree lilies oh the tree lilies okay uh, the ornamental tree lilies are you are you saying tree lilies or are you saying tree peonies um, I, I'm not sure of tree lilies. I think it's I think it's tree peonies you're thinking about, and you and you fertilize all the peonies, and you know give that to them now because now is the time they're setting the flower buds in the tubers for next year. So you know so make sure make sure you take care of that. Okay, I'm going to check the time again. Okay, we have those seven we have those seven questions in the question and answer area. Okay, it's 1:46, 1:46. And um, I think, I think we, I think we've covered it all. So um, now we're we're going to send out. Carly's going to be sending out um, um, an, an, a notice, an e blast, an email to everybody promoting um, the um, the Garden Coach. And so she's going to be sending that out every Friday, promoting you know sign up for the Garden Coach. And you can send in your questions, or at, you know, off, you know, put in, enter your questions when you're on, you know, when you're watching, and um, and and again, I, I loved hearing from the people that you know gave me the feedback about using the um, um, and, and enjoying the 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 you know the notes that we're including, so you don't have to break your wrist taking notes, and then also the product list of the of the different products that I, that, that I've talked about. Thanks and thanks for that feedback. I, we love we, I, we love that, and we're actually using it to really you know really help help you all. And we love that you're signing in for our virtual um, our virtual presentations. Oh, you guys, tomorrow is uh, is is the second the second half of Tony Fulmer's garden, um, 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 and it, it was taped. But they're going to be airing it tomorrow. I believe it's at ten at 10, but then you can also go to the uh, the YouTube channel, or the Chalet YouTube, and, and watch it. How many of you watched and watched Tony, Tony's uh, garden um, YouTube video last year? Wasn't it good? I, I, I'm hoping you all got to see it. He just did a beautiful job, and his garden is just absolutely wonderful. So sign up for tomorrow's, so you can see you can get the tour of you know the second half of his tour of his of his garden. It, his garden is just phenomenal. He's such a great plantsman and such a great uh, such a great um, great gardener. So do that. Don't forget that you can um, always enter you know send your questions to um, hello at chaletnursery.com. That's our um, that's that that's that's our customer uh, call center. And then uh, we actually have an extension out at the plant information um, center now, and it's six three four. So you dial the chalet number eight four seven two five six zero five six one, and then you can get right to the office dialing six three four. Okay, and um, be sure and bring your samples. Drop your samples off, and uh, you know we 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 you know we're we're really we're we're really enjoying you know doing this. Oh, okay, Usha, you said Oriental and the Trumpet hybrids. Okay, I'm sorry, I didn't I'm sorry, I didn't understand that. And thanks for the compliments. Marion said a wonderful presentation. I really enjoyed it. Thank you, thank you. And um, I'll stay on for a few more minutes for you know any more questions that you have, and. Um, just stay tuned, and um, we're having all kinds of wonderful promotions. Always read your emails. Read your emails because our marketing department is always promoting neat new things and neat new specials. And um, and we're going to keep having the farm truck, uh, virtual farm truck, where you can do the bidding. You know, you can do the bidding um, online. And, um, and, and, and get great values and, and, and great products. Our, our product is looking fabulous from our farm, you know, from our farm. So, so um, okay, here's another one. Oh, we're coming to the nursery. Okay, very good. I'll, I'll look forward to seeing you. And, um, and, and I, think, I think we're good, we're good, we're good. We've dropped down to 17 people. So as people are finished, they're signing off. And um, I, I wanna thank you all. So, um, uh, stay tuned and uh, and keep watching. Also, you know, and and watch watch for Tracy Butler's um, you know um, Facebook post and and then all of our all of our our um, our, our wonderful um, 
webinars. Thank you, everybody. Okay, bye-bye now.